Hey, are you a resident of the Sacramento Bay Area and have not found a whole church yet? Well, look no further and join our family of believers at Nations Life Chapel. We meet every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for our empowerment service, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for our Word on Wednesday Bible study, and every last Friday of the month at 10.30 p.m. for our Life with a Prayer. During our services, you'll have an encounter with God, and your life will be transformed. Your hope will be restored, and you'll understand what it means to be a disciple of Christ. So hey, just take that step of faith and come and worship with us. I took a step of faith, and God has transformed my life in ways I never thought possible. So I'm inviting you to join us for our weekly services, and we will not be disappointed. Hey, we, we look, look forward, forward to seeing you! you. The name of Jesus begin to bless the word of the Lord we will wait on him we will not be weary in the name of Jesus at this time lift up your voices begin to pray for the ministry of the word as the word comes forth begin open your mouth and begin to bless God for his word that is coming forth tell the Lord that I know that your word is quick and powerful and I know today that it shall divide asunder my soul from my spirit that that which the Lord is trying to bring into my spirit, that my soul is able to capture it, and it will cause my bodily function to work according to the will of God in the name of Jesus. Begin to bless the, the Son of God. Begin to bless the servant that is going to use today in the name of Jesus, that is open his mouth. He shall speak from the throne room in the name of Jesus. We ask the angels, oh, that I sell in strength to come today as the world comes forth to bring our, our, our presence, to bring that which God has given unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to bless the Lord for the word that is coming forth. Hallelujah. Somebody begin to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, the Lord is good and all the time. Put your hands together for yourself and for Jesus one more time. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying shall we be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. And thank you also for keeping in step with the fast and prayer that is going on. As you know already, we've started fasting on the 9th throughout to the 29th. And we are on Zoom Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We are here Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We are on Zoom. Amen. So tonight, we're going to be on Zoom at 6.30 p.m. Amen? So please try as much as possible to join the fast. If you haven't started yet, please, you can start. Hallelujah. Only that you're going to end after we have, start, we have ended. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we want to bless the name of the Lord for you, and we thank God for you, for what God is doing. You know, if today is your first time in the house, we welcome you in the presence of the Lord. And we thank the Lord for your life because it is the mercies of God that brought you here in Jesus' name. Now, I observed something. When the choir was singing, people were not clapping. They were not dancing. You know, we are going to tell them, God forbid, this time around they have to come and dance. They have to come and shake. If possible, they have to put some money on the altar for the choir. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. You know why? Because it's an appreciation. Because after we are finished, prayer line on uh, Friday at 7.30, they came here and rehearsed till we finished at 10.15. Amen. So you have, to, you have to appreciate them. You have to glorify the name of the Lord for their life. So put your hands together for the choir, for how wonderful they are doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We celebrate the name of the Lord. To this morning before I preach, you know, the man of God in the house has a powerful testimony. He wants to glorify the name of the Lord with. Amen. A powerful testimony. So, I want to welcome to the podium and let's welcome Pastor Charles. He, he told me last Sunday he, was, he, should have give, he would have given a testimony last Sunday. But this Sunday, I have reserved the testimony for the church. So, let's put our hands together and welcome our dear Pastor Charles Entry to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. By their testimonies, continue. By their testimony, complete it for me. Amen. Last year, was it last year? Uh, conference, I was here. In fact, I've been blessed every time I attend the conference. 
right? You know one of them, huh? Exactly. And this second one. And I'm waiting for this third one, too. But there's something I want to encourage you to do before I give my testimony. Have you realized that most churches, we pull our families and friends to come to where we worship when we are going to dedicate our child, we're going to have a birthday, an occasion, and a special thing. Then you see our friends, co-workers coming to support us. Have you realized? Or it's not true here? I want us to change that mindset and bring friends and family to church any time we are coming. Because my passion and my prayer is that this church will be full. Amen. That next ISPAN conference, we need to look for a bigger place. Amen. Because I don't know what you are receiving. I have received so much blessing that I can't wait to see us growing in a bigger place for this conference. Anyway, let me cut it short because the word of God is coming very soon. This year, the Lord has expanded me. Because I attended last year's conference. I was looking for an expansion in my life. And if you know how corporate American works, sometimes your accent becomes a barrier. Sometimes your color. As if it's not there, but it's real. But the Lord will change it. Amen. And he has changed it in my life. Amen. I applied for a position for a very long time that sometimes they will look at me, you did well, but the letter that comes breaks hearts. So I told God that, Lord, I'm going to attend this conference and you need to expand me. Sometimes, I don't know, some Christians will take, especially the settlement, you need to take it as a vision and run with it. Amen. So that before the year ends and we'll bring another, yes. you should see something in it. Yes. That has been my goal ever since I met Jesus. That it is not just a name and a title for the year, but it is a vision for the church to run with it. Amen. That every member of the church will have a testimony that the year is my year of expansion or settlement. Hallelujah. The Lord has expanded me. I attended a position that I'm waiting for a very long time interviewed. I was picked. And immediately, the 3rd of January is the first working day, right, this year. I was in my suit. I went there, and I saw my office. And guess what? The following day, they said, no, we're going to give you a higher position than this. It was something that maybe is going to be after six months or one year or three months. But they said, no, looking at the way you are responding, I went, I, I, I reported third. Fourth, the position has changed Amen. to a higher position. Amen. So this is a testimony I want to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I told Jesus here that Jesus, you need to expand me. He did it. And I'm testifying to challenge you. Amen. To provoke your faith Amen. in this conference. Amen. Don't let outsiders come and tap into this blessing. Amen. Whilst we, that the thing is for us, Amen. we are not getting it. Amen. Let us run with this vision. Amen. And I know that your expansion will come. Amen. And you will testify Amen. unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you not excited? Are you not excited? We are excited because God arose and all the enemies scattered and gave him to another position in the name of Jesus. Now, because he has said that you have provoked my spirit and my faith, so I'm going to tell you what the theme of the conference is this year. Go to Revelation chapter 4, verse number 1. 
that is the theme of the conference this year. As if nothing is happening. You're going to see it. He said, after this I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice I heard was, as it was of a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up higher, and I will show thee things which must be what here there are after. So the theme of the conference is come up higher. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let somebody come up higher. After you have the Lord have settled you, and the Lord is settling you, you will go higher. After this, I look and behold, a door was open in heaven. A door. Somebody say a door. Somebody say a door. It was open in heaven. And the first voice I heard was at, as it was a trumpet talking to me. How can a trumpet talk? Pa -pa 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 -pa. Talking to you. A trumpet speaking. Talking to you. And which said, come up higher. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So everything that is going to happen in this year, God will show it to you. Tell somebody, I am coming up higher. Tell somebody, I am coming up higher. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is the theme of the conference. Pastor Charles, you have never seen anything yet. After, after six months of that higher position, another one is coming. And when you are walking out of that office, they will give you the company car. You will not use your car to the place anymore. You'll be using their company car. In the name of Jesus. It is settled. Tell somebody it is settled. In Jesus' mighty name. I am excited because you have never seen anything yet. The Lord is doing mighty things. This year conference is going to be wonderful. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be double. It's going to be loaded in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, after we've had the conference last year, after we went home, I realized that the Lord has endowed a lot of people. The reason why is because of your faithfulness. He has made way for you. Amen. So if you have not seen your testimony yet, open your doors. It is coming to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I celebrate God for your life and I thank God for the testimony you have given. May you be challenged. Therefore, I want to tell everybody from now onwards to the end of October, everybody in the church, I tell somebody, the man of God who came to preach, he didn't come. You saw what happened. He came to put an impact into us. Did you see what happened last year? So this year, I want to be expanded. I don't know what the Lord is bringing. I don't know who the Lord is bringing yet. I don't know. So we are depending on the Lord to do miracle in our life. So I am throwing it before the church. Those who have not participated in contributing to the to the to the how to call it to the progress of the conference this year, I'm giving opportunity to everybody. Amen. Start giving it out. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars until the five hundred is made up. Hallelujah. You know why? Because after the man of God has come, see, when we pray, when we sing, when we fast, we do everything without giving. All right? Without giving, the job is not complete. Amen. So the Lord demands your sacrifice. Somebody say, Oh, Pastor, what are you talking about? $500. I should have taken the $500 to go to Vegas. Ah. Somebody say, Mercy and atonement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I am praying for you. You are coming up higher. Next week Sunday, if you have a testimony next week Sunday, prepare. Because he has just provoked your spirit. It is coming to you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the honor. We thank you this morning for your glory and your power. Father, come among us and let your name be glorified. We speak the word of the Lord this morning that is able to shake every ground. We pray that, oh God, you will bless our heart. You will bless our mind and let your will be done. Father God, may we leave this place with a revelation. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Tell somebody, this is my settlement order. Tell somebody, this is my settlement order. Hallelujah. We are in the year of settlement. And we know what the Bible talks about. The, 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 the theme about the year of settlement. First Peter chapter 5, verse number 10. By now, I want everybody to chew that in your mind and be ready to fire up in the name of Jesus because God is doing something great in your life. Hallelujah. This is my settlement order. It is your settlement order. 
Why? It is your settlement order because whenever an order is given or you have an order from the courthouse, they want you to appear and they want to settle a case on behalf of you. Perchance, maybe you are the one in trouble with somebody and the person is bothering your life. God will want to make sure or the, ju the judge will make sure that when the, when, 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 the, when the case is passed around, you are given a fair share of the judgment. This morning, I am in the presence of the Lord and I want to declare to you, this is your settlement order. And then we're going to look at what a settlement order is. And that is going to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen? A settlement order is an agreement that ends a dispute and a result in the voluntary dismissal of any related litigation. Settlement order is an agreement that ends a dispute and result in the voluntary dismissal of a related litigation. A settlement order means a written order issue by the director to terminate a civil penalty against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me? A settlement order, it, it is what? It is the act or the process of settling an issue between you and somebody. And this morning, the one that is going to be, how do you call it, settling your case this morning is God. By the time you walk out of this place, I, I, I promise you, by the faith of God and by the power of God, the Lord shall show forth a miracle for you. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we are looking at that. So now, because we have a settlement, a settlement order, we want to look at the process for the settlement order in our life. What is that process? Because if you have a settlement order, there is a process you must go through. If you are called to come to the courthouse, if you are called to appear before the doctor, if you are called in a place, there is a process they take you to to be able to get to your order. Tell somebody today, the Lord will vindicate me. Or say it like you mean it. Say today, the Lord will vindicate me in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now we want to look at that process, that the process to that settlement order. Now, when you are called in the courthouse to come and do something and they have given you time to appear before the courthouse, I believe you want to leave on time and when you leave on time and you get to the courthouse, it's not yet time for the court to start. What do you do? What do you do? Say it louder. What do you do? Wait. Clap for yourself. Put your hands together for yourself. Hallelujah. So, the settlement order in the kingdom of God concerning your life today is waiting upon the law. Tell somebody waiting upon the law. Tell somebody you wait upon the law until the Lord delivers in your hands. Hallelujah. When you look at the word or the Hebrew word to wait, it means that just wait. Wait and don't talk. Don't say anything until the time comes. Amen. Wait just wait don't talk don't speak up just shut up don't say anything until the lawyer says. have you ever gone to an interview before and you get to the interview just like he said and it is not time for the interview and you go around asking questions people in the same office you want to go to be interviewed can you do that by the time you get there say who is the manager of this place can i talk to you what about this job? What is about this job? And how much are you going to be paying me? They might not even give you the job. There's a red flag around you. When you get to the courthouse and it is not time for you to get to your, your judgment, you wait. The Bible says, For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 30, 29 to 30. Hallelujah. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. Go, go back again, again. 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with what? With wings as what? Eagle. And they will do what? They shall run and they not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Tell somebody, I am running and I will not be weary. Tell somebody, I am running and I will not be weary. I am walking and I will never faint. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What the Bible is talking about is that it is only in the waiting room that God begins to meet you. If you can't get to the waiting room, there is no meeting with you. Psalm 62, reading from verse number 1 to 2. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 62, reading from verse number 1 to 2. Hallelujah. 62, reading from verse number 1 to 2. Truly my soul waited upon God. Truly my soul waited upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Can I hear a loud uh, amen? My soul, go back to the verse number one. My soul, that's what the Bible is saying. Uh, my soul, truly my soul waited upon the Lord. If you want to get through the settlement order, you must know that you have to learn uh, to let your soul uh, wait upon the Lord. It is in the waiting that God begins to pour upon you. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. There's somebody you need to wait. There's somebody you need to wait. This is the secret to your settlement order. It is the secret to your settlement order. Now, I want to give you some scriptures that will, that will expand us. Psalm 130, reading from verse number 5 to 7. I'm laying a foundation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 135 to 7. I waited for the Lord. My soul do wait. And his word do I hope. Those who want to enjoy settlement this year, even though we have been giving the word our year of settlement, you are not going to run ahead the agenda of God, but you are going to wait for the Lord until the Lord delivers into your hand. That's something you need to wait for the Lord. He said, I wait for the Lord my soul do wait it is my soul now when you talk about your soul your soul here is explain your emotions your intellect your will and not allowing you to break down but you wait upon the law tell somebody my soul my mind my spirit and my will will wait for the law hallelujah this morning i want to let you understand that it is only when you understand that my soul waited for the lord more than they watch for the world the morning maybe you are waking you you sleep at night and you are waiting to see when the sun is going to come and you you you, you run outside to no just wait for the lord to do it it is in the timing of god and if it is in the timing of god the lord will do it I say more than they that watch for the morning my soul wait for the lord let your emotions, let your will wait for the Lord. I am here to tell you, some people are going to be surprised this year. Amen. Didn't I tell you last year, I will be officiating some wedding this year. The first one is in May. Hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! The first one is in May. The sec I am calling the date so you grab it in the name of Jesus. The first one is in May. The second one, it will be in uh, April. The third one is going to be in, uh, in July. And the fourth one is going to be in September. I declare in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Tell somebody, it is settled. Tell say, say, for my sake, it is settled. <laughs> it is settled. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell you, Lord. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell you, Lord. What the Lord has done for me, African American beat. I cannot tell you, Lord. He saved me and watched my sins away. Hey, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell you, Lord. The Lord has done for me. What a Lord! I cannot tell it all. Oh, what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. He saves me and washed me that well. Oh, oh, I will sing hallelujah and shout hallelujah.
me t- let me teach you how to receive prophecies. Amen. Prophecy is not only the, when they mention your name yes, so. I know. and declare words over you. Amen. Prophecy is an utterance that comes from the mouth of the speaker. Yes. That is the backing of the word from the Holy Ghost yes. concerning your life, the future. Amen. So even if your name is not mentioned and some things are mentioned, you have to grab it. I am saying what the Lord has done, it is settled. Amen. God has done it for you. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Say, the Lord has done it for me. The Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go to Psalms 25, verse number 5. Psalms 25, verse number 5. Psalm 25, verse number Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. When you are troubled, your mind is troubled, your spirit is troubled, in order to go to the other, well, 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 your settlement order, you have to understand that there is a process of waiting. And the process of waiting is not comfortable. Why it is not comfortable, it has to do with yourself so that you can, be, you can be able to empty yourself and release the self out of you so God can put his spirit inside of you. Some of us, what God is saying is that I need your attention, I need your mindset, I need you to spend time in my presence. So wait for me in my presence and I will do that which you are requiring. Amen. 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 Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait. Lead me. If you want God to settle you, you must allow God to lead you. Does somebody allow God to lead you? In the name of Jesus. If you are not allowing God to lead you, then you are leading yourself. David said in Psalm 80 verse number 18, Psalm 80 verse number 18, not only that, most of us are impatient and we are not allowing God to lead us. You want to lead yourself. You want to go anywhere. Somebody has said something very small to you. You know, you get upset and mad and you want to move away from the presence of the Lord. Turn to somebody and tell the person, sit where you are. Sit where you are. And see the salvation of the law. The, the Bible says, so, so what? We will not, so we will not, we go back from thee. Quicken us. Somebody say, quicken me. And we call upon thy name. David said, the only way I can be able to wait upon you if you quicken me. If you strengthen me from the inner man, I will wait upon you. There is a process of that settlement order. That process is to ask the Lord to quicken you. You are waiting there and you are getting tired. And the men are not coming to propose. But I command in the realm of the spirit. That wherever they are coming from. It will not be a useless man. But it will be a man with the correct head. That will come to you. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's about time that people shouldn't come around and play around you. You know why? It is about time that you know that. The God you are serving. He is able to satisfy you. So you can remain in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You will not marry to a man that will tell you, let's go take tequila. I said, you will not marry to a man that will tell you it's a tequila night. Let's go and take tequila. It's a man that will tell you, can we hold our hands and pray? Can we divide the word of truth? Can we read the word of truth? Can we descend the word of truth? Can we sit in the presence of God in the name of Jesus? Amen. Look at them. They are looking at me like the most righteous people. Amen. You are looking for a child of God. Somebody say a child of God. A A man that fears God. When he hears the the, the, the word of God, he will sit and listen to the word of God. It only comes through quickening. The Lord must quicken you. How is he going to quicken you? Through the word of God. The more you read the word of God, the more your spirit is alive. And if you don't read the word of God, how many of you had your devotion this morning before you came to church? Sincerely, you had a devotion. You woke up in the morning. I'm watching you. I'm going to, I'm going to mention you. Everybody, you woke up in the morning and then you just say, I'm going to read my Bible for some hours or some few minutes and I, I will dissect the word 
and I will use the word to, to, to guide my life. How many of you did that this morning? Hallelujah. Those who didn't do it, thank you for your honesty. Clap for yourselves. Amen. It is the word of God that comes to quicken you. It is the word of God that comes to sharpen you. So the order of settlement is for you to wait upon the Lord through the word of God. Even though it tarries, wait for it. It will surely come. I promise you it will come. And I know it is coming. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tell somebody it is coming. Isaiah chapter 33 verse number 2. Look at what it said. Isaiah 33 verse number 2. Ah, Maka. Without waiting, no power comes in your mouth. If you don't wait on the Lord, you don't get any power. Tell somebody, if you don't wait on the Lord, you can't get power. Because if you wait upon him, that's where the power is going. Now, guess what? If you don't, without waiting on God, there is no power. And because there is no power, you will get weakened. And when you get weakened, the demons will be multiplied. Can I say it again? If you don't wait upon the Lord, you don't have any power. You will not be endowed with the power of God from the word. And because you don't have power, you will become weak. And because you have become weak, the demons and the enemy will start multiplying. Because there is no word inside of you. They make you to be weak every day. Oh Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou there armed every morning. Our salvation also what? In time of trouble. In time of trouble. Oh Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. How many of you are waiting on the Lord? I don't mind waiting. Guy. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. in a place and every morning we go to, I go for work we, we must have a morning devotion and in the morning devotion I will start these songs and start to play this song and all the people there the student there will be singing they said they love my version my version of this song more than how they sing it I said why he said the, the, the thing they love about it is that the way you pronounce it is what gets into our spirit. I said, what is the difference? This, I said, sing your own. They said, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. My own, my version, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't mind waiting upon the Lord. Why? Because that is the place he's going to meet you. It is the place he will speak to you. It is the place he will reveal to you. It is the place he will pour out into you. It is the place he will expand you. So you don't mind waiting upon the Lord. No matter what it is, I change my accent from waiting to waiting because I know you are waiting upon the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Listen. Good things come to those who wait. When you run, you rush. And when you rush, you crash. Good things come to those who wait upon the Lord. Sometimes you look at yourself and say, Ah, oh my friend. I wanted to say something. You see the one, you see the way since I know let praise and worship today. Thank you. I receive your correction. In Jesus' name. Did you see how Dr. Inonge, <laughs> if I catch you, call her Sister Inonge, I will pay myself, don't worry. Are you hearing me? Did you see how she led praise and worship today? Yes. Now, she is in another realm. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Another realm. Now, how did it come? It came because there is fire in her. Yes. Yes. And may that fire come to burn. And may that fire continue to radiate in the name of Jesus because I have never seen her dance reggae dance before. 
but this morning she was checking oh 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 oh, oh. you should have seen last friday the way she was checking it and sister alice was checking it they were breaking it back and they were coming breaking it back. i watched her so I, is that the same person i knew in this church something has changed when you catch the holy ghost fire nobody will tell you to go up higher the lord himself will begin to move you higher may that be your portion in the name of jesus shout hallelujah praise the name of the lord so you get to understand that you have to wait upon the lord psalm 37 verse number seven look at what david uh, described it psalm 37 verse number seven he said rest in the lord and wait patiently for him fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his ways rest in the lord and wait patiently for him fret not thyself because of who because of him who prospers in his ways tell somebody rest in the law see sometimes we we worry ourselves so much that because a lot of people are going ahead of you so say, oh, oh what am i going to do right now ah the lord have to do something ah, le, ah, oh let me find a shortcut ah this is the oh, no, then you go to google google help me to reach my destination siri will tell you talk again come again i am not supposed to help you to reach your destination siri will tell you that now a lot of us are not waiting patiently upon the law go to psalm 40 verse number one psalm 40 verse number one look at what david said in psalm 40 verse number one it will surprise you he said i waited patiently for the law and he inclined unto me and heard my cry verse number two let's go ahead verse number two and he said he said he brought me up also out of what horrible beats out of the mary clay he set my feet upon a rock and established my going hallelujah tell somebody the lord picked me up and brought me out and establish my going david said i waited now verse number three he said he put a new song in my mouth he put a new song in my mouth even praise unto our god many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the lord go ahead to verse number four many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the lord blessed is the man that maketh the lord his trust and respected not the proud nor such things such turned aside to lies hallelujah blessed is the man that maketh the lord his trust listen to me if you trust in the lord you will wait for him Amen. somebody will tell you why are you going to nations life chapel because the lord has called you here you will be surprised you will be surprised what God is doing in your life in this church. Amen, amen. Foundations are being laid. Amen. Ah, rocks are being put together. Amen. Directions are being given to you. It is just a matter of time that when your waiting is over, you will see the glory of the Lord. Just about, you need to wait patiently. You have to learn to wait. Wait, just wait. Sometimes we rush too much. Don't be quick to leave the house of God. Don't be quick to run away. Ah, everywhere there is fire. Everywhere you go, there is fire. But it is you that determines how you want to maintain that fire. Everywhere. The Lord wants to use you. I want to see many in this house doing a lot of jobs in this house. Can I hear Amen. I'm coming after you one by one. You can't just sit down. Some of you must join the choir. We need auto singers. We need tenor singers. We need barito singers. We need falsetto. falsetto for, how do you call it? We need falsetto singers. Are you hearing me? Somebody tell me, what, what, is, what is the meaning of falsetto? You understand falsetto? Okay. Thank you. That's the, first, that's the falsetto he has given. Pray it again. Do it again. We need that voice above all the voices that is for settle we need ushers we need people 
in the prayer department. We need people in the children department. We need people in, in the ushering department. Listen, we need people everywhere. Find yourself to do something for the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And let the person who needs you come to the house to see that you are doing something. Then they get connected to you. Are you hearing me? Yes. Do something for the Lord. Find something to do. When you come to church, decide what you want to do. You are waiting upon the Lord because, listen to me, iron sharpeneth iron. And God wants to use you as an, as an iron to sharpen another one. How would you be? You go to your work as a nurse and there is a patient in front of you and the patient is so sick. Instead of you administering medicine or medication to the patient, you lay your hands on the patient and she start walking. Hey, hallelujah. Do you have faith? Is that possible? Is that possible? Yes. It is possible Amen. because you are carrying fire in your bosom. When you wait upon the Lord, God begins to do miracles and signs in your life. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Can I hear a powerful amen? amen? Now let me tell you what waiting does. Waiting empties us from self. It will empty you from self. Waiting will empty you from self. Waiting, number two, enables us to receive God's fullness. It will enable you to receive what? God's fullness. Number three, waiting quiet the soul. Amen. I am going to teach you one power and one secret this today, this morning, before you leave. I will teach you a secret that will give you power forevermore. Can I teach you? Are you ready to receive it? Number four, waiting enables the Holy Spirit to touch our depths in God. Waiting enables the Holy Spirit to touch our depth in God. Psalm 42, verse number 7 to 8. Look at what it said. Waiting enables the Holy Spirit. Deep call it unto deep. At the noise of thy water sprout, all thy waves, all thy billows are gone over me. Verse number 8. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto what? The God of my life. The deep call it unto deep. It means that whenever you wait upon the Lord, the Holy Spirit begins. Some of you, let me tell you, sometimes when you are in your room and you are in your house and you are doing nothing, maybe you are at your job and you are driving, just be quiet. And just tune in into a, a spirit of worship and listen to the Holy Spirit. The Lord will begin to quicken your spirit because there is a revelation in singing. There is an empowerment in singing. There is an empowerment in quietness. When you are quiet, God begins to show up for you. Can I hear a louder? Amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. When you wait on God, He begins to create some water sprout in your life. You know what is water sprout? Whatever happened is that God will carry you and send you on the speed. So waiting enable the Holy Spirit to touch our depth in God. When you wait on God, it begins to create some water sprout in your life. Now go to Psalm 30 verse number 15. This is what I'm going to teach you right now. Uh, Psalm 30 verse, no Isaiah, sorry, Isaiah 30 15. Isaiah chapter 30 verse number 15. I'm getting closer. Isaiah 30 15. Are you there? Hallelujah. Mako parado shabaya. For thou sayest the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. Now, this is the this, this is the secret I'm going to show you. Read the next one with me. Uh-huh. In quietness, in confidence, shall be your strength, and ye would not. Somebody say, in quietness. 
shall be your strength and your confidence in the name of Jesus. In quietness, the Lord empowers his spirit and steals your soul into emptiness and the power of the Holy Spirit begins to come upon you. Now, let me tell you, the reason why a lot of people fail in certain challenges is because you talk too much. Pastor, our people, we talk too much. We complain too much. But the power to sustain this year is in silence. It is in quietness. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. When you talk too much, you pour out too much energy on unnecessary stuff you're not supposed to be doing. You must learn to be quiet. Learn to be silent. Learn to wait upon the Lord. Learn to let your mind be gazed upon the Lord. And be quiet in the moment of love. People do talk. Pa, 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 pa. You talk and talk. Oh, why is this not working? That one is not working. Oh, that one. Oh, my life. Uh, if, if you see my life. Uh, if you see. But you. You are even eating more than the people who sleep on the, on the street. Do you know that? You have a place to sleep. You have clothes to wear. You have food to eat. You have families who calls you. But do you know that some people, because of this rain that is going on, they are still sleeping under tent. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and what He has done for me, my very soul shall cry. Hallelujah. Oh, pray. have not eaten three days ago there are people that don't even have doctors to visit there are people that don't have not even gotten medication because of their sickness they are still alive you are not better than them but the lord found you faithful and he has granted you mercy and compassion you need to praise the lord you need to honor the lord and tell god thank you the more you praise him the more he do miracle in your life in the name of jesus so emptiness is very good and it will help you it is only in waiting psalm 46 verse number 10 it is only in waiting it is only in waiting if you can't wait be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the hidden and I will be exalted in the air. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am your God. Be still and know that I am your God. Be still and know that I am your God. still and all be still let your soul wait upon him people of god devote your time for god devote your life for god wait upon the settlement order now there are three things that i wanted to do in your waiting in your waiting number one you must seek god through the word it is the word that brings the process it is the word that brings what the process and pushes the process forward in your waiting you must what depend upon the word number one that is the word number two in your waiting you must find yourself in a place of worship you need to worship god you need worship does not mean does not mean it doesn't mean music worship does not mean mean instrument worship is when your totality of your heart is connected to god and you are poured out into god and say lord here i am use me you must learn to worship. That's why our mode of worship in the church must be very effective. This year is one of the things that we're going to concentrate on. 
that when you come to church just let the worship flow let the worship flow you must seek God through the word you must seek God through worship and you must also seek God through warfare someone say warfare it's very important that is prayer because if you can't pray then you cannot get closer to God you need a word you need a worship you need warfare which is prayer you need the prayer of God you need the, that's what this listen if you have not started your fast I beg you and I be, let me use Bible terms I beseech you by the mercies of God you can join join it please join it because it will help your spirit it will quicken your spirit are you hearing me it will connect you to God self will be poured out, out of you you will, will be taken out of you and the spirit of God will come upon you can I hear a louder amen, amen. my last verse before we leave my last verse before we leave this morning is going to help you let's go to the book of Zechariah chapter 2 verse number 13 Zechariah chapter 2 verse number 13 Le Caparado Shabalia Zechariah chapter 2 verse number 13 are you there? look at that be silent can we read together? one to go be silent O all flesh before the Lord sometimes it is good to be quiet and be silent let the Lord take control of your life be silent all of flesh before the Lord for he is raised up out of his holy habitation he's come out where he is he's come out because he wants to meet you he's come out because he wants to have conversation with you listen you must learn to be still you must learn to be silent all of flesh be silent this morning I want to give you an opportunity before the Lord and I want to give you the privilege to come before the Lord in your heart of worship in the heart of your word this is your settlement order the order is they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength I waited patiently on the Lord and he heard me he inclined unto me and he heard my prayer be silent all flesh all flesh be silent be silent let the mountain be see sometimes in your home at your place sometimes sometimes it is good to get away from your phone get away from your phone get away from your phone are you hearing me and spend time in the lord and ask the lord to reveal who he is to you when you do that every day your spirit will be renewed every day shall we be on our feet shall we be on our feet shall we be on our feet Ah, thank you. Songs of Solomon 1 4. As we pray, Songs of Solomon 1 4. Kabada, Sobeli, Kaparadosa. Songs of Solomon. This is the part that you have not been reading. You have it in your Bible, but you know what it is. You only read it if you're a man, if you want to write a love letter. People are acting, they don't know what I do. He said, Draw me. We will run after thee. The king have brought me into what? His chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. Go ahead. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Draw me. It is in the drawing closer to God that God begins to connect you. He said, draw me. Draw me. Draw me closer. Draw me. I want us to pray tonight. Father, may my spirit learn to wait upon you. Here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love.
that you will pour out unto us as we wait upon you there are people in this house that are asking oh god for your direction asking oh god for their settlement which has been promised unto them meet them oh god in their waitings open the flat gate open the gate and the heavens for them and let that gate oh god bring favor from above i declare upon you that your spirit will be quickened your inner man will be elevated i decree and i declare that the glory of the lord shall not depart from you lord have your way lord have your way and let your name be glorified i pray that you will seal us with your blood and you will cover us oh god throughout this fasting time we are coming back to you in prayer this evening father help us and quicken us we celebrate you we magnify you in jesus mighty name we are praying can i hear a louder amen, amen. now go to somebody and tell the person let's share the grace with the person may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever God bless you for coming. God bless you for coming. Your settlement order is settled. In Jesus' name.